past 30 years, the World Archaeological Congress has grown and changed. Many of our values and commitments have seen some success in the world. Gender equality, human rights, community collaboration, and ethical research design are all now fairly routine topics for the SAA, the EAA, the SAB, and um, most of our regionally based sister organizations. Many archaeologists who once looked over their shoulder at the unwanted onslaught of whack values have turned around and extended a hand. But our job isn't over. The controversies and injustices that gave us the Congress are still with us and still fomenting evil in the world. Sexism, racism, poverty, inequality, and war all have deep roots nourished by ideas about heritage. Now is not the time to lose our critical edge or back away from our political clout. But it is difficult to know how to convey our ethics and values to the next generation. While we must include members who believe archaeology can be apolitical, they should be aware that most of our membership have joined because they find that stance untenable and even offensive. But people simply do not read codes of ethics and are apt to be so excited about being heard that they forget what the impact of their voice can be. Recent comments on the WAC list serve that shocked some of us testify that this is a problem. But I believe that Joan Giro has bequeathed us a way to solve this problem. To explain this, let me tell you about Joan's last book. The book is called Utopian, Archaeology, Ambiguity, and the Production of Knowledge in Northwest Argentina. Utopian, spelled Y-U-T-O-P-I-A-N, is the name of the tiny village and therefore the site where she excavated for several seasons. Ostensibly, the book is a monograph about the findings at the site, and it fulfills all the requirements of a first-rate scholarly text based on good empirical science. Knowing that knowledge is situated and respecting many types of interpretation does not invalidate traditional science as one of those ways. Joan's book is full of figures and tables, counts and types, photographs with scale and directional arrows, and data-based analysis and interpretation. After all, Joan was an American archaeologist and her scholarly credentials are what gave her a seat at the feast table of South American archaeology. But woven into the fabric of her science are all things whack. Our democratic values are realized in the readability of the book for any audience. It is written in plain, elegant language that never patronizes the reader. Unlike any monograph I have ever read, it is truly interesting beyond its summary of findings. Each time I pick it up, I find it hard to put down. Wack's commitment to inclusivity is inherent in her honesty, honestly reported relationships and conversations with the people she worked, uh, who worked with her, villagers, students, and academics. At one point, Joan apologizes that she did not do self-consciously community-based archaeology, explaining that she knew little about the approach at the start of her work and felt she was ill-prepared to do it. But there are many ways to do community-based archaeology, and as more and more archaeologists try to do it with marginal success, the complexity of such programs and the potential for misuse have become clear. Very few of us are really prepared to do it. If there is one generalization that seems to me to be valid across the communities of archaeology across the world, it is that establishing respect and understanding between diverse stakeholders is the foundation of success, and in this Jones approach is equal to any community-based approach I have seen. She speaks candidly about her relationships and conversations that sometimes included disagreements, and she considers and analyzes the possible impact of her presence on the people with whom she worked and lived whose material resources were thin and whose needs concerned her greatly. She wrestled continuously with her desire to be both generous with her own resources and respectful of a life way very different from her own. And her concerns enter into the text of her book, creating a framework that shows without telling how her life in the community inflected her experience and her understanding of the past. Joan did not incorporate local interests in her research design, though she did incorporate local scholarship and collaborated with Argentine pro professionals, but she clearly talked over her strategies and interpretations with all the members of her project and quotes all her collaborators with good humor and high regard. I suspect that an archaeologist who returned to Utopian 
would find a community very engaged with their archaeology and full of ideas about the meaning of what Joan found and what should be investigated next. While they may not have cared very much about her academic research, it is clear from her stories about their friendship and support that they came to care very much about Joan. Joan's science is feminist science. There is no pretense of perfection. She is assertive about what she left undone, what mistakes she made, what data did not fit her expectations, and never makes the mistake of thinking it is possible to prove that something is true. She does, however, display a healthy understanding of the importance of falsification. Most of you probably knew Joan as one of the mothers of gender archaeology, and this book is very important in that regard because it shows clearly the difference between a truly engendered archaeology and an attempt to add women and stir. It's not a book about the role of women. It is about the lives of ancient families and human relationships that developed in this small, rather isolated place and changed in form and substance over time. Joan did not believe that finding a matate was finding a woman, but an indication of what gender might have meant in utopian. The discovery of hearths and plant remains was not a conclusion, but a question, and the suggestion of hierarchy was an opportunity to unpack archaeology's traditional assumptions. Let me read you a quick quote. To identify a ritual non-domestic structure at Utopian would serve the socio-political uh, economy of research very conveniently. It would put our Utopian project at the center of new interpretations of formative ceremonialism and would raise Utopian's fundamental importance for understanding formative, formative developments. We could be famous. But without belying the significance of what was discovered at Utopian, namely that structure four, appears poised to have hosted ritual ceremonial activities, I'm uncomfortable opposing ritual ceremonial to quotidian domestic when we explain the functions of early formative structures. It is precisely because the early formative generally lacks a category of public or ceremonial buildings, because such structures aren't known, that we should expect inter-household ritual practices that would be staged in houses and emerge out of domestic routines. Some rituals might take place around events that define and redefine social membership in the community, births, deaths, coming of age to undertake specific new roles, while others might celebrate the completion of work necessary to communi community well-being. This text is quintessentially Joan. The idea of fame made her laugh, and her interest in the past was not an interest in promoting herself, but in bringing forward the questions that archaeologists can ask to undermine colonial assumptions and broaden our understanding of human possibility. She dismisses the glamorous interpretation in favor of a more human view, a view that privileges not elites, but the vitality and cre creativity of ordinary people. Joan's utopian is profoundly ethical and responsibly political, but delivered with a, with a, with a light touch and her signature touch of whimsy it is entirely unique. Utopian embodies whack values of the democratization of knowledge, engagement with the gendered and political present, respect and collaboration with indigenous communities, concern for human rights, peer collaboration with local scholars, and educational opportunities for students done in the context of meticulously recorded data collection and replicable science. It will be a very hard act to follow. Nevertheless, I believe this book sets a sort of standard of excellence to which we might all aspire. As a realization of WAC values, it can serve the purpose of bequeathing WAC heritage to the next generation of members. To allow it to serve this purpose and to ensure this pivotal work receives the status it deserves, I have proposed that we initiate the Joan Giro Book Award to go to the next book which best embodies WAC values. I suggest that the award be granted every four years, since I do not anticipate that a suitable successor will appear very often. The award has been endowed with travel money so that the recipient will be able to receive the award in person, beginning at the Congress of 2020, WAC 9 in Prague. I urge you all to have the temerity to reach for this award with your work over the next four years, and I look forward to reading what Utopia's Jones work will inspire. Thank you all for your companionship during my four years as WAC Vice President, and most of all, thank you, Joan. Friends, 
I feel as if I have been living in a dream in which a ideal speech situation is not a illusion, but reality where we exchange our views, thoughts, ideas, and everything, not regarding each other's differences caused by various injustices of the world. And then when I am forced to wake up, to face up to this reality of this great Congress of ours is coming to an end. I think it is that easy to say dreams are dreams and realism prevails. I don't think it is not only wrong, but also saying that easily should be discouraged from our collective experiences we have had by sharing this great space here in Kyoto and coming to probably correctly believe anything can possible if we dream in a way which is realistic. After all, even if we try to do things in pragmatic terms, how we would like to be pragmatic is up to what kind of dreams and ideals we have. Therefore, I would like to pre my friends as members of WAC carry on dreaming the cause of WAC and the dreams of WAC which have been carried on by our great friends who are no longer with us and great friends, they still have been with us in the form of Professor Golson, uh, who was with us yesterday, and with our young friends. They just came in to be, uh, 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 to, to greet us moments ago. After all, the past, the present, and the future are us human beings, not determined by the development of machinery or the uh, spread of neoliberalism or globalization. It is up to us what to do about it. And work is the place where we share our ideas and the considerations and if necessary to stand up against the evils and to do something good to each of us and do good to the world. So as the newly elected president of the World Archaeological Congress, together with uh, my newly elected um, colleagues, uh, Ines Domingo, uh, Ndukiaki Ndrobe, and Katsuyuki Okamura, uh, we promise you uh, to do our very best to serve you, but uh, after all, it is you and us, World Archaeological Congress, uh, that is what we would dream and dream to accomplish. So thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to serving you for the uh, 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 term of our office. Thank you very much.